in the SLO is nothing more than a roadmap. I, I, I think that there are, obviously we have a destination, but there are pits and stops along the way that you pull that map out and, and, and use it again to reflect, um, to redirect where necessary so that you can get to that destination. Uh, it's where you stop and ask for directions from other people. This process, even though we call it SLOs, it's not new, you know, it's, it's something that good teachers do. An SLO is essentially your essential goals or your essential questions that we all develop in our classes anyway. And so this is just a way of documenting that. A lot of us felt like it honored what we had been doing already. And someone said the joke about SLOs and with the educator evaluation, like, welcome to the party, we've been waiting for you. Uh, it really did send us the message that what we were doing was right, that it was valued. And, and just setting the message uh, and communicating it regularly that we value local teachers making local decisions about local data. Uh, teachers respond to that because they're smart people. They know how to they know how to support students. I don't want to imply that this is brand new. It's just that we've never had the language to discuss it before because now we're given this terminology, this vocabulary, um, this structure that we can use to talk about the good work that this teacher is doing. Uh, first, I freaked out, I think, thinking, oh my gosh, how am I going to choose these learning objectives? And, you know, with all of the students that you teach and all of the things they need to learn, how are you going to choose which ones? Well, I think the initial knee-jerk perception is that it's an add-on. Oh, one more thing so they can tell me I'm not good, you know? And so I think it, it takes a lot of um, skill on the part of every evaluator to really change the nature of that conversation because it isn't an add-on. It's really about um, getting to the heart of teaching. Last year when I was first introduced to the new evaluation system and I learned about SLOs, I thought this is a waste of my time. This is, and I don't have time to waste. Yeah, I mean at first I, I had this delusion of grandeur, you know, that everyone would have for their second SLO math or literacy based. And I just thought, oh, well, you know, we all teach reading and writing and all of us have math in our content area somehow. And then I realized that when I was requesting that from certain areas, it would kind of be like shoving a square peg in a round hole. You could do it, but I didn't want to force teachers to do something that wasn't a natural fit to what they do. A lot of people that were creating new assessments for their SLO, and it kind of became this separate entity from what they do day to day. And um, that's not good for the kids or for the teacher, you know? You don't want it to be like SLO day. You want to just be part of what you do. In the buildings where I see this um, process going smoothly, I think the teachers have come together to form teams, grade level teams, um, and they've had the ownership to create the assessments. And they come together on a regular basis to talk about the data, talk about the lessons they've created around the work, and there's a, a sense of collaboration around this work. So it just came down to really listening to the teacher and them saying, like, it is not a good fit for me, looking at the curriculum and realizing, yeah, it's not, and I don't want to force you to do something that just for this process if it's not what's important to what you teach. I think the most positive thing I've seen administrators do is when they can calmly present this whole idea of this evaluation system in a positive light. We look at this as getting better at what we do, supporting kids, and improving their reading, their writing, their mathematics, and their skills in, in all the content areas. Yeah, in, in general, I think one of the biggest benefits from the SLO process has been the level of collaboration that's resulted from it. Even if it's a brief conversation in the hallway or it's at common planning time or if I organize a meeting, the amount of time that we've spent actually discussing student progress I think has skyrocketed and it always comes back to those SLOs and that data. The thing that I like best about the SLO process is that it puts the student in the evaluation process. It was like a light bulb that came on. Like, why are we leaving students out of this process? Like, they're, they're the number one stakeholder here, and so why don't we pull them in and show them the data? If students can see how well they're doing, and if they can set goals to improve, and if they get regular feedback on how they're doing towards those ends, they're more motivated to do the work. I think it forces 
um, you to do that progress monitoring and so you don't have students who are um, slipping through the cracks so to speak and, and, and you're really targeting well they're not going to meet this SLO so what do I need to do as an educator to get them to meet that and so we're not just passing them on to the next grade they are actually becoming proficient in the targets and the essential questions that you set. Just let me teach uh, I hear that a lot, and I agree with it, uh, but there's, a, there's an addition to that. Just let me teach what my students need. How do you know what your students need if you're not analyzing the results? Uh, you're shooting in the dark, and what we know when you shoot in the dark, you almost always miss. It's like a doctor you know, prescribing blood pressure medicine to someone and never, pro never monitoring their blood pressure, never taking readings. So how do you know how much medicine they should take or if they need to even take it anymore. So when I look at my data as the year goes on, I can see the students that I really need to focus on more and that allows me the chance to meet with them periodically throughout the year before it's too late and, and to really try to get them to where we think they should be. School leaders need to help find the time for teachers to do that uh, through faculty meeting time, through any uh, common playing time that's been identified. Um, through release time, uh, through uh, focused, sustained um, professional learning communities. We know you didn't become a teacher for paperwork. You became a teacher to help students grow and this is one tool that you're going to use to get there. We're delivering it with a smile because we're here for kids and how can you not get excited about that? I try to always focus on the, the student and always think about our overall goal is to help students. Um, I think SLOs help you to see whether you're being effective or not and that's what teacher uh, the evaluation process is. Are you an effective teacher? And if students aren't learning, you're not effective. There's a lot of jargon and surface talk about what makes a teacher important. But for me, the SLO is where the rubber meets the road, that we are able, that we have skills to um, design the right learning activity to help determine where a child is according to a set of criteria. And for me, that's our skill. And so it's really worthy that we perfect that. It has been very challenging, and so I, um, I just really want to encourage us as a profession to give this a chance, to really take it seriously. It makes me feel successful and it makes me feel like they will be successful in their next grade level. I know that I've helped them to grow and develop so that they're ready to move on. So before setting student learning objectives, um, I would wonder if students were learning. And through setting the student learning objectives, now I have my evidence and I know that students are learning. And that to me is um, one of the most beautiful things to see with your own eyes that students are learning while looking at the data that you are um, getting from your SLOs. Now that I've gone through it for a couple of years, I see the benefits of it. And I see how it really can help drive my instruction. And it really makes me more knowledgeable about my students as the year goes on, which makes me a better teacher. It makes me more able to meet their needs, which that's my job when it all comes down to it.